What's up, Zoners? I am Big Turd Ward, and this is the first episode of Mock Draft Mondays for the 2024 fantasy football season. I'm doing all the mock drafts, so you don't have to, man. I'm sitting there in the lobbies five minutes at a time with all the computers, so you don't have to. I'm sharing all my knowledge with you every single Monday, and these are going to be short episodes. So let's get into this right now. Biggest values I have seen. So as far as the tens of mock drafts that I have been doing, I've been selecting these guys every single time. I can't believe they are where they are. Last year, I was talking about Keenan Allen, Raheem Mostert, and uh, <laughs> Calvin Ridley. <laughs> uh, at this point in time, and two of those three ended up being league winners, dude. I drafted them on my team. I did not win that league. But no more time to waste. I've got all my notes written out. I'm going to share that with you right now. All right, first up. James Connor, dude, the Terminator, for all I'm concerned. He gets cancer. He gets traded. It doesn't matter where he is. He produces fantasy-wise and in real life-wise. He is going number 64 overall, man. That is the top of the sixth behind DeAndre Swift and Aaron Jones, who we'll talk about in a second. But that is in front of Brian Robinson. And if you know me, dude, I do not want a piece of Bulletproof Rob right now. James Connor, where he is, is a steal. His ADP last year was running back 24. He finished his running back 18, so he did better than uh, he was drafted last season. And, dude, he's now he's going as running back 32. Finished as running back 18 <laughs> with injuries, dude. Four, he had four games he was injured, and he still finished as running back 18. And now he's going as running back 32. What has changed here, man? I guess he's gotten a year older. He turns 29 in May. Uh, dude, you did not know this, but Arizona, they got their new head coach. Gannon, I don't want to say Rich Gannon, but I think that that dude is a quarterback from a different era. I know this guy's name's Gannon. And uh, from the Eagles, so they love to run the ball. Well, that showed up, dude. Arizona, sixth in run block win rate last year at 72%. So they are an elite run blocking team. Arizona uh, was number 10 in rushing rate last year at 44%. So top 10 team in rushing rate. You know, we were known as, uh, you know, the air raid offense. Not we. I'm not a Cardinals fan. They were known as the air raid offense. And then guess what, Do They turn that around with this head coach. They run the fucking ball. 48% over the last three games. That's when James Conner went off. He had 22-plus fantasy points in four of the last five games in 2023. That is a top five running back, dude. Uh, let's see. 25-plus carries in three of those five games. He is a workhorse, man. James Conner's been a workhorse his entire career. And it carried over. To Arizona, and man, it's not like Kyler Murray is uh, Jalen Hurts. They're not going to be running this little tiny fool all the time. They want to protect him. They want to run James Conner. This guy finished sixth in rushing yards, and you think he's washed up, man, and injured? He was seventh in explosive run rate and eighth in forced missed tackles per attempt. Forced mass missed tackles per attempt. I'm just reading an art article on it. That is a very important indicator of uh, fantasy. Somebody going downhill fast. He is not doing that. On the depth chart is what? E. Marcado. Michael Carter, and they did pick up DJ Dallas. I do not care, man. That is, Connor is a totally different running back. This team should be getting nothing but better. Say they get Marvin Harrison Jr. or some crazy shit like that, they should be scoring more points, more opportunities for James Connor. There's no way he's going to stay at the top of the sixth round. James Connor, like, I'm, I'm going to be all in on the hero running back. I'm borderline. James Connor might be a hero running back this year, and you can get him in the sixth. That changes your draft strategy, man. So there you go. Next up, I said I'd be talking about him in a minute. We're talking about Aaron Jones. I am a Vikings fan somewhere up there, dude. He's going number 62 overall, so just ahead of James Conner. Top of the sixth round behind Ramondre Stevenson. ADP last year was running back 16. He finished the year as running back 37, dude. So he missed six games due to injury. He's going running back 24 right now, so, you know, Running back 16 last year, people thought he was still going to be good. We really were out on the Packers, and he still was going running back 16. Nobody believed in Jordan Love. Nobody wanted anything to do with the Packers, still running back 16. These injuries, man, he was like the Keenan Allen of the year before. He kept on trying to come back from that hamstring. It sucked. So I think I'm going to take advantage of this. I took advantage of this last year with Keenan Allen. The metrics said that Keenan Allen was not getting too old. We'll talk about his, this guy's metrics in a second. He is 29 years old. And now what has changed, man? He went to the Vikings. So the Vikings O-line is dominant in pass protection, but they did rank 19, 19th in run block win rate last year. That is not great. Green Bay was middle of the pack at 16th, so it's going to be a very similar situation. The problem here, dude, the Vikings, the third lowest run rate in the NFL at 37%. I went back, 
Kevin O'Connell did the same thing. They were the third lowest last season as well, even with Dalvin Cook. And the year before that, they were up at league average. So when Kevin O'Connell got there, they stopped running the ball so much. I think that might have something to do with um, uh, with the talent there. If they draft somebody, I mean, not if, they, if they draft somebody, they have not had somebody of Aaron Jones' talent in a while. Dude, weeks 15 through 10, Aaron Jones, man, averaged 21.6 touches and 120.3 yards per game. He was eighth in explosive rate and 10th in yards after contact per attempt. Aaron Jones still has it, dude. And it's like the role that he can fill in the Vikings. I'm a Vikings fan, man. I'm always like, there are so many points on the board for the Vikings running backs. Ty Chandler is great. And like, dude, he had 20 something points that one game. He actually played well. I'm telling you, dude, a Vikings running back will get 20 plus fantasy points per game. If he just can stay healthy, dude, like I'm telling you, man, Aaron Jones could be a top five running back this season. Also, LaFleur, dude, the offensive coordinator for the Rams, uh, 2017, 2018. This is where he's coming from. The Packers with Coach LaFleur. Kevin O'Connell, the offensive coordinator for the Rams as well. The year, oh, 2020 to 2021. It's going to be the same offense, man. The same lingo. Aaron Jones should acclimate immediately. All right, guys, last up. This dude right here, I'm going to be pushing so hard to get in the first round. Right now, I think I'm going to push, I'm thinking I might be ranking this dude over B. John Robinson, and I might be crazy. B. John Robinson is going in the first round, and you could get this guy in the third round. That is a league winning formula right there dude derrick henry number 26 overall top of the third round right now he's going right behind camara isaiah, uh, isaiah pacheco and joe mixon is going ahead i repeat joe mixon is going several spots ahead of derrick henry right now and that is a crime last year's adp was running back eight he finished the year as running back eight so you got what you paid for last year man and it was still a down year for him. It was his worst year fantasy-wise. I think he averaged like 12.6 fantasy points per game. Before that, his worst as they started was 16 point something fantasy points per game. So by far, his worst year in fantasy. So I think that left a bad taste in people's mouths. Guess what, man? Things changed. He is uh, going... So right now, I do want to talk about where he is going. He's going as running back 13, like I just said, top of the third round. 30 years old. So that was... He's one year older. He's 30 years old. That changed. What else changed? He went from the Titans to the Ravens. That is a positive change. The Ravens were number five in run block win rate last year. The Titans were 21st in run block win rate last year. That is a huge positive for Derrick Henry, dude. The Ravens number four in the NFL with 26 rushing touchdowns last year. The Titans had 16 rushing touchdowns last year. And I think 12 of them were by Derrick Henry, dude. So the Ravens, <laughs> Gus Edwards was getting, was getting three touchdowns a game. Derrick Henry is going to kill it. He's going to lead the league in rushing touchdowns next season, man. Also, the Ravens were number one in the league in run rate. So at 50%, they ran the ball just as much as they passed the ball. That was number one in the league. And that meant they were number one in attempts too. But guess what, dude? The Titans were actually pretty good too in run rate. They were number nine, but they were so bad, they didn't get the opportunity. They were 20th in attempts. So he gets to be on a good team where he gets that opportunity with a team that has the philosophy of running the ball a lot. Man, Derrick Henry is going to kill it this next year, man. And, hey, he's washed up, right? He's washed up. Dude, he's 30 fucking years old. He was ninth in explosive run rate and 11th in yards after contact per attempt. Derrick Henry, man, he led the NFL in rushing attempts with 280. He is still a workhorse back. He's going to have so much opportunity this next season. He is my number one value of the draft this season. And, hey, we got some uh, honorable mentions right now. Let me scroll down. I might as well just go straight into this, man. Whatever. I'm losing my breath. Uh, Christian Kirk, dude, top around eight. Christian Kirk, number one wide receiver. Even when they had Calvin uh, Ridley there, he was the value pick. He was a solid wide receiver too. Now everybody's gone, dude. Wide receiver one numbers for Christian Kirk, and he's going in the eighth round. What the hell are we talk? What the hell are we talking about? Raheem Mostert, bottom around nine, dude. I love Devon A. Chan, but do they trust he's going to be healthy? They extended Mostert's contract by a year, dude. You got to get Mostert. He had like uh, he led the league in rushing touchdowns last year, some crazy shit like that. Uh, Shakir, Tupac Shakur, man, and uh, Curtis Samuel. I don't know which one I'd rather have. I think I'd rather have Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur is being undrafted right now. They just got rid of Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis, and uh, Samuel going top around thirteen. So there is going to be a number one wide receiver on this team, and you could get him thirteen or later. Jerome Ford, dude, still going on top around fourteen. They got what Devontae Freeman, Nick Chubb. His leg is going in every direction. Jerome Ford, dude, huge value there. DJ Moore, top around four. 
I believe in DJ Moore over Keenan Allen this year. And uh, all I hear is that, you know, the worst thing about Caleb Williams is that he leans into the spectacular. Well, if you're going spectacular, it's not going to be Keenan Allen. It's going to be DJ Moore. So DJ Moore I'm rolling with. And in the top of the four, top of round four, I think he's going to be a, uh, let's see, round two draft pick in 2025 fantasy football. So get in on this early, man. All right, everybody. That is the show. Thank you so much for watching. If uh, you know of any good draft values, please comment down below. If you disagree with what I'm saying, comment as well. I will be back doing this every single Monday, except for next Monday, because I have my uh, anniversary coming up. So I got to get my priorities straight there. But then every Monday after that, man, with the draft, and we're going to be doing live mock drafts, Jason and I, soon. Hopefully I earned a thumbs up. Hopefully I earned a subscription. Look at our subscribers, man. We need them. Please help this show. We will never get to 1,000 unless you subscribe right now. Thank you so much for watching. This is Tyler Big Turd Ward, the Fantasy Red Zone, and we appreciate you.